So as I had promised earlier with all of you that I'll be back with some important tips uh, for uh, preparing for the uh, MPhil and PhD interviews, which all of you are waiting uh, now since uh, the scorecards of MPhil and PhD admission test, which was Delhi University entrance test, do a test is already released uh, by NTA and all of you are already aware of your scores. So uh, some of you would be shortlisted depending upon the uh, Delhi University guidelines, which I had shared in uh, one of the earlier videos. If you haven't gone through that, you can go through that now. And uh, before, uh, uh, since uh, while uh, during all this time when you are waiting for the interviews, all of you need to do a couple of uh, things which I thought I'll just share with all of you. But before I go ahead with those things, I would like to uh, start with a disclaimer here that whatever information I'm sharing here is as per my own experience uh, and as per my own uh, knowledge uh, over the years. Uh, so it might vary for various departments or various courses uh, because every department has its own criteria of doing uh, these uh, interviews or uh, doing these admissions. But let me uh, clarify this to all of you uh, that whatever the admission process uh, is for these uh, research courses as well as PhD, more or less the overall criteria remains the same, not only in Delhi University, but for any other institution or for any other university, the uh, most of the procedure is very general and the common procedure, there are very um, general things or the common things which each one of you should know uh, if you are really uh, aspiring for admissions in these courses. So that is what I'm going to share. Whatever I'm sharing here are very important uh, tips uh, for any, um, interview uh, regarding MPhil or PhD courses in any of the institutes for that matter. So uh, I thought I might uh, just forget a couple of important things. So I made a small uh, a presentation and noted down a couple of points so that I don't miss out on anything important here. Uh, as I have already mentioned that uh, uh, these MPhil and PhD courses, uh, they are governed by a lot of uh, guidelines. Uh, so if we are talking about Delhi University, basically, so uh, there are uh, different uh, guidelines which are already being posted uh, time to time on Delhi University website. Uh, so the very first and most important thing each one of you should do that you should basically go through these admission uh, guidelines, admission bulletins and uh, Delhi University has an ordinance, ordinance 6B, which takes care of all the uh, all the requirements of MPhil and PhD courses. Uh, it tells you everything about the eligibility criteria or the um, uh, admission committee or maybe the, um, the selection committee or the selection procedure or who will be shortlisted and uh, uh, later what will be the, um, uh, what, what are you supposed to do once you are enrolled in PhD program or MPhil program. So everything uh, is being taken care of by the ordinance 6B in Delhi University. Along with that, uh, you can have uh, various documents which talk about the seat availability in various departments, which are the courses which are offered by different department. So all these, uh, uh, all these are, uh, uh, all these documents are already uploaded on Delhi University website and I've shared in one of the earlier videos it already, if you haven't gone through that video already, you can go through it now if required. And also, otherwise I'll share the uh, links of all these documents in the description box uh, in this video also. So you can go through that also if required. Uh, one of the most important things which I want each one of you to understand is that every uh, candidate who is uh, looking for admissions in these courses, should go through the department website for sure. Yeah, the department in which he or she is trying to take admission, should you should just have a look on the department website. And most importantly, you should have a look on the faculty profiles, especially so that you have an idea of which kind of research work is already being carried out in your department. What are the specific topics on which your faculty is working? And uh, this basically will give you an idea of even your own interest. 
that which topic suits you the most or which topic do you think is more important for you so that so that it, it becomes a little bit clear in your mind that which a specific research area you should opt for uh, if you uh, like somebody's profile if you like somebody's topic you can maybe talk to that person directly also uh, especially if you are already having your jrf you already have a fellowship so you can even talk directly and uh, maybe it might click if the topic is of your interest if uh, the discussion goes well maybe um, a direct interaction might also help you so uh, for that you obviously need to uh, be uh, thorough with the uh, research work which your department is doing you you should be knowing that whether your department has some uh, transdisciplinary areas of research or not whether there are interdisciplinary work Uh, which is being carried out uh, by some faculty and that can be of your interest or maybe uh, it it will give you the briefs about all the research topics which your faculty is working on and or depending upon that you can uh, make it clear in your mind by doing some more uh, uh, literature survey or some more research on internet resources to uh, find out that what topics are in of uh, your interest and are interesting to you so that uh, uh, so that uh, you are able to decide upon that this is the work i am going to carry out if i am given a chance and why i am asking you to do so is a very important reason for the same because uh, all of you might be already be aware of the fact that some of the departments have already asked for a research proposal while you might have registered online but there are few departments which have not made re submitting research proposal mandatory at the online uh, registration time but now when you go for the interview they might ask for writing a small research proposal so you should be ready for that and when uh, when you are asked to do so so obviously you will be able to do that only if you are already aware of the research problems which are there and uh, they have to be related to your department also i mean you can you can just Uh, write down anything at random so for that you will have to do a lot of research already before really going for the interview or before really entering the research field because uh, till you are pg if i understand it correctly most of the time uh, we are not exposed and students are not exposed much to the Uh, research so they are not really aware of which kind of research is going on uh, uh, to be very frank they literally do not uh, have any idea or maybe a very uh, vague idea about the research field so uh, for for their uh, clarity it is really required that they should uh, they should be knowing about the research topics uh, or the uh, uh, subject areas in which already good work is going on or Uh, already uh, there is a scope of doing good research so the research pro proposal which you might uh, uh, keep uh, ready with you if required uh, by the department at the time of your interview uh, you should be able to write it and that research proposal should have a very brief crisp and catchy title interesting title so that uh, it gives you it gives a very uh, uh, nice impression to the uh, to the person who is reading it that okay uh, this has a clear cut research title this project has a clear cut research title this should have a hypothesis or the origin of the problem uh, the research work which you wish to carry out uh, what others have already done on the same what are the loopholes what exactly is going to be your contribution or your idea of working then how do you want to go about it the methodology or the work which you wish to carry out the techniques or the instrumentations which you wish to use for the same or maybe if you are uh, thinking of doing some kind of practical uh, theoretical work then uh, what are the requirements of your softwares or the programs uh, for doing so so all of these uh, things should be there then what do you expect at the end from the project what is your expected outcome Uh, of the project that should also be mentioned uh, also a very uh, a very important thing that each one of you should be knowing about the research field which you are uh, in which you are proposing your topic of research 
what exactly is the application of that research because uh, most of the time what happens is we propose a research but we do not have any idea where it will be applied what will be the possible applications of the same so that question is extremely important to understand reason being uh, the applications of the uh, work need to be known uh, very clearly before you really define the problem because uh, uh, once you know the application of the problem it becomes very clear to uh, to others that since this topic is very important that is why working on this topic would be um, helping uh, helping the society as a whole or uh, there will be overall benefits for everyone so that is something very important which each one of you should be uh, aware of another uh, very important thing uh, though most of you might already be aware of and might already have made a good cv for yourself but uh, if you haven't done it by now you should uh, you should make a good cv now and it should have all the um, educational uh, qualification details where you have studied what course course you have done what were the percentage of marks and in addition to that the most important thing is if you have been have already been exposed to any kind of research work during your maybe uh, summer breaks or maybe during your internships because that is going to be very additional uh, benefit uh, for those of you who have already done that if there are certain additional skills which you have acquired some kind of instrumentations you have learned some kind of softwares you have learned or computer or ict skills which you might have grabs grasped in the meantime which can be helpful during your research work so they they are going to be the additional benefits uh, so you have to emphasize upon those things and uh, um, along with all the contact details obviously which you need to mention uh, in your cv uh, uh, in addition to that another important thing is uh, you should keep a uh, few topics in your mind um, uh, very if you are asked to give uh, a, a list of two or three or four topics uh, on which you are very comfortable which are on your tips uh, from which you uh, you should be asked any question so you should not be lost you should just quickly uh, give the names of three four five topics which you are good at um, which uh, on which you any questions can be asked uh, any time and preferably it will be good if they are related to your research field which you are proposing or which you are thinking to do uh, if given a chance so uh, that is also uh, that should also be taken uh, care also uh, since the research topic and the research field which you are uh, going to propose obviously that will be leading to a lot of questions uh, whatever work you are proposing you should be aware of that work you should know what has already been done and uh, what what you are proposing is is has to be something new has to be something innovation innovative because that is the preliminary requirement of research that the work which you wish to carry out should not have should not have been carried out by somebody else already so um, you should have an overall uh, overall brief about uh, that work overall brief about the faculty profiles the department's profiles uh, on which people have already been working so these are certain important tips which i wanted to uh, share with all of you if by any chance you have any other uh, any further queries related to these interviews uh, please write in the comment box i'll try to uh, respond as per my understanding uh, as and when uh, required uh, so I would like to end up uh, with a quote uh, by Neil Armstrong here, uh, who has uh, said that research is creating new knowledge. So my sincere suggestion to all of you is only if you wish to create something new, interesting, innovative, and only if you want uh, to uh, give certain uh, benefit to the society in return, then only you should uh, enter research because it, uh, you have to be passionate about research. So uh, if you are passionate about the research, that is certainly going to be the most wonderful field to be in. Uh, that's all. Uh, wish you all the very best and um, hope some of you would be uh, into research very soon. So wish you, uh, wish you all the best from my side. Thank you.